Outside the Box Reviews, we are taking a look at the Bandai Tamashi Nation's SH Monster Arts Mothra figure. And this is the one I had been waiting for. This is the figure that from the beginning of the line I was really hoping we'd get. And I was so excited when they finally announced that we were getting a Mothra. This version is from the Heisei era, from the movie Godzilla vs. Mothra, or Godzilla and Mothra Battle for Earth. Which is fitting because an overwhelming number of the SH Monster figures are from the Heisei era anyway, so it just fits in with the rest of them. So let's jump right in and take a closer look at Mothra. Mothra comes with a very nice display stand. This one is black instead of the usual clear. Has all the little flakes of like the pollen on here and then the cave drawings of Mothra and Batra. Very nice looking. It's not as cool as I was hoping it would be in a weird way. I was actually anticipating it would be a lot more like the Fire Rodan stand where it was a clear black or translucent black with the flex kind of in the plastic. I thought that would have been a cool effect. We didn't get that, but this is kind of what I was expecting. What we got isn't bad. We then have our usual Tamashi stand arm that will come out of the stand. Now when I first got mine, it was very, very loose and I actually had to go into these joints with a Phillips head screwdriver and tighten up all of them just to make it so that it would stand up under the weight of the figure. Not really a good thing that this would come so loose seeing that this is a figure stand, not just like an effects part, so it's a fairly heavy piece it's holding, but not hard to fix. So the stand will of course plug right into the base there, and then you have all your articulation points. You can swivel, you can hinge at three different points, so you get a good range of motion on the stand. Last but not least, we have Mothra's actual cradle, and I really like the design of this. I think it's very well accomplished. By comparison, I'm doing this comparison a lot here, here is Rodan's cradle, and we can see they've very much streamlined and minimalized the amount of plastic and the amount you're going to see of this stand here. Rodan actually just sat across this cradle here. This piece for Mothra will actually come in here, the large section, the large opening will actually go around her abdomen, and the rest will go in between her leg joints there, and it's a pretty tight fit. and very very inconspicuous when you have it on display. I really like how that attaches. And of course that piece just pegs right here on top of the rest of the stand. Very tight fit. And there you go, there's the completed Mothra stand. As for Mothra herself, and yeah I'm gonna call her or her because to me, Mothra is usually feminine. I know back in the Showa era, the one you saw in Ghidra the Three-Headed Monster and Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster was a, supposed to be a male version, but I don't really remember if it was ever specified in this movie, yeah, so I'm just going to call it female. But the sculpt on it is amazing. They got that very nice fluffy texture going on, so it's a very fuzzy Mothra. But they really captured that with some great sculpting on there. The paint is very nice and clean. We have translucent compound eyes on her, which are just spectacular. They really pick up the light and look great. The little jaw up here in the front, which starts off as black at the base and then kind of goes to a brown color at the tip. We have her antenna up here with a nice brownish orange streak on the top of them. Nice little detail there. Coming down our back, we have some more of the great white and orange paint on there. And then going into the wings, it just looks phenomenal. These wings are a thing of beauty. The blacks are very nice and rich. The yellows are vibrant. The oranges are vibrant. The red's pretty vibrant. So a lot of great paint detail. The orange border around the yellow kind of lightning bolt effect on either side of the wing. The inner parts here and the outer edge kind of has a fuzzy texture to it still even these little bands here as well but the outer section is much more kind of leathery looking you can almost see there's the banding in there almost be bones even though it wouldn't be with moths I don't think but whatever the whatever's creating the actual structure of the wing and then the more delicate kind of leathery texture to it which you can see as creases down here at the edge which look just phenomenal and the little secondary set of wings back here it's some more great paint on it, a nice fade in kind of sunset color going from a red to an orange to a yellow fading up to the body it's very very good looking very nice looking and these are pretty much all that leathery texture with the exception of these little stripes up here. Flip Mothra over and we see she has her little legs down here which are very nicely detailed. Very very tiny little legs but these are actually a dirtier white kind of an off white with an even brown in some sections kind of making it look like she's been sitting in the dirt. Little yellow feet down here. 
but very nicely sculpted, still keeping that fuzzy texture going on them, except for the, the feet themselves, which look nice and scaly. Just the underside there, and the little, I don't even know what the heck that is at the back. It looks like a stinger, but it's not a stinger, because it's a moth. But very nice, very shiny and kind of carapace looking, which is very important for a bug. <laughs> But overall, I am just blown away by how beautiful this figure looks. It is phenomenally good looking. For articulation, Mothra actually has a lot more than I thought she would. Her antenna are on ball joints, so you can actually move them around just a little bit. Everything on this figure feels very delicate, and it's kind of scary to mess with this figure to be quite honest but the antenna are on a ball joint so you can move them around the jaw is on a hinge so you can open and close it which i think is a very nice touch these little i don't even know what you'd call them but little mandible pieces here are also on ball joints so you can move those around you can kind of rotate them a little bit the head is on two separate ball joints so we have the head itself on a joint and then another joint coming down to connect to the body so you get a phenomenal range of motion side to side rotation which is a little squeaky, but very great range of motion there with Mothra's head. The wings have a fairly robust feeling joint in them, which I like. It's a nice hinge up here where it connects to the body. It doesn't feel as fragile as some of the previous wings Monster Arts has done. But you can move up and down with the wing. Also, the secondary wing has the same articulation, obviously hindered by the wing above it. But very nice range of articulation on those. They go very far up, and they will go very far down as well. So you could have her kind of in a resting position on the ground if you wanted. Once again, Monster Arts figures, it's also recommended to try to move them as close to the joint as you can, just to reduce the risk of stress on the joint itself, but be careful with them and I think it'll all work out well. The legs are actually the only area of articulation I've had problems with, just because the joints will pop apart, because we have so many segments in each leg. We have a ball joint up connecting to the body itself, we have a kind of double jointed hinge here in the middle going down to the lower section of the leg another hinge here and it can rotate at both of those hinges and then the foot itself i think could swivel but it's so tiny and so delicate i really don't want to risk trying but all six legs have that same articulation so a great range of motion there and this back lower abdomen section has some really good articulation as well it can swivel up by the body and then each one of these segments is ball all jointed just like the tail so you can move it up and down and just get all kinds of weird poses out of it now the heisei mothra i don't think did a whole lot of this i don't think the puppet used on screen was capable of doing this kind of movement but later on in the video games mothra has kind of had more motion there you've had moves where you can kind of rotate that down and bring the head down and she like shoot something out from the little stinger there at the bottom and I know at least in the video games, I don't remember if she ever did that in one of the movies, but very nice that you have that option of articulation, even if you never choose to use it. Kind of just trying to get you your money's worth on one of these figures, I think. So for a quick comparison, here is Mothra next to the Heisei Godzilla, and... I think they're in pretty good scale together. The stand lets Mothra fly pretty high over Godzilla, so I think you can get some great poses with them together. And of course, since I kept comparing them, here Mothra is next to Rodan, two kaiju in a row in the Heisei era that got represented, recreated from the classic series by puppets. And I think these two work well together also. It's actually kind of funny because I never really thought getting Mothra would make me mess with Rodan so much more, but it really made me kind of pull Rodan out from the back of the shelf and mess with the way his stand worked and kind of compare the two quite a bit. So it's nice to see a very big evolution here for the Monster Arts line between what they did with Rodan's stand and the wings on creatures like Ghidra coming out to being this much more streamlined version here with Mothra. So overall, I absolutely love this figure. I was so hyped up to get it. I was really worried it wouldn't meet my expectations. And in a weird way, when I first opened it, it kind of felt a little small, a little too fragile and dainty, but the more I messed with it and the more I just had it sitting on my desk and admired it, just on sculpt alone, I love this figure. The sculpt and the paint make it a great little statue, and the fact that it's posable beyond that is just icing on the cake to me. I'm so glad we got this Mothra, and the best part is, really, even though this is very specifically the Heisei version, it kind of looks enough like the Showa era version that you could probably fudge it in a couple displays if you really wanted to. So this figure gets a high recommend. For going Giant Monster Monday, this thing is definitely a cult classic. 
go get one. If you're a giant monster fan, go do yourself a favor and pick up this Mothra. One of my favorite monster arts figures, I think, to date. Definitely makes me want to go pick up that Batra that came out earlier this year. I was actually kind of just waiting to get the Mothra to decide if I was going to get Batra or not. And yeah, I need the Batra. And I definitely need that Larva set that should be coming out anytime soon this month. Hopefully in the States. I know it's already out in Japan. But as soon as Amazon gets that one in stock, I think I'm going to be placing my order and getting in my Mothra and Batra Larva. Make sure you check me out on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. Also check me out on Facebook, link below. And until next time, this has been our Outside the Box Reviews. Stay tuned for more to come.